So in this video, we're going to take a look at the service catalog in CloudBees CDRO. So what it is, is a place where you can have templated versions of your resources, such as release pipelines, it can be application deployment models. It can even be operations like provisioning a new Kubernetes cluster. We've got a bunch of out of the box ones, as you can see here, like cloud provisioning, pipelines, applications, just to give you some ideas of what you can do. And if you're to click into any of these, like a database deployment, each of these will have some sort of form and some instructions associated with how you're going to kick this off. And you can even set up access control rules to determine who's actually able to run any of these given operations. Let's take a look at an example. So imagine you've got a release. Well, someone's already gone through and done the work, and I want to create a new release based on this. Well, I could just go in here and copy the DSL and paste it into the DSL ID or use EC tool, and that would work. But let's be honest, that's not really ideal. And so what we do have, if we go back to the releases page, if I click new release, I can just copy existing and I can select that exact release that I just looked at. And then I can say, all right, let's put it in my own project and my new insurance release. Hit okay. And there we have it. I've got a new instance of that same release pipeline. However, there is one pretty big problem here, which is I'm going to have to go through and configure these things specific to my use case. So if I go to this Git repo here and I go to the input parameters, I'll see that, hey, this is Chris, one of my coworkers, his Git repository. Well, that's not exactly what I want. I want it to be my repo. So I could change that. Then I'd have to change it here. I have to make sure that all these things line up. And that's not exactly ideal. And so what I can do instead is we can take that same exact base. Again, we looked at the idea of using the DSL editor. You actually have the ability to do a DSL export and you can choose to suppress all of the nulls and all the defaults. So you only see the differences and you can take that and bring it into the self-service catalog and create a new instance that has some templatized items. And we'll take a look at how to do that in a minute. But if I'm able to go to one of my catalogs here and I say, create insurance release, well, instead of having to go through and find an existing release to base mine off of, I can say LD insurance release December. I could choose one of the templates and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. It is now complete. And so now I can hit this yes button to go to the new release. And here we go. It looks virtually the same, except the name is a little bit different. But if I click on this, I'm going to see that this is actually specific to my GitHub organization. Well, how has it done this? Well, Let's take a look at how we can create one of these. So to start with, we're going to go to the service catalog and up at the top right, you'll see this new catalog button. So you go ahead and click that, create a new one. Let's call this demo catalog and I'll put that in my project. If you want, you can add a description and some tags. I'm going to leave mine empty. And now I've got this form to create the new item. I'm going to call this my amazing release. There we go. And so let's go ahead and define this. So here we can choose some nice information like when we are presented with the prompt, you know, what does the button can actually say? Create, create, employ, execute. In this case, we'll just say create. And we have some items here that we can choose from. We could also use a URL link if we wanted a custom icon, but we're just going to go with CloudBees CD. Why not? And down below, I could add some details about uh, basically instructions or anything like that that I want. And as you can see, it can use sort of rich text elements. I'm going to skip that for now. Really, the most important part here is going to be this definition of the item. And so you'll see here we have sort of three main ways of defining things. We have the DSL, which is really the most flexible, which we'll come back to. We also have a plugin where I could say, I want to, let's say, go for a feature flag, use the feature flag plugin. I could say, I want to. Uh, let's get experiments. So this is a procedure in our feature flag plugin. And so if I go ahead and hit okay, obviously that doesn't really match to our name right now, but we'll come back and change this. If I switch over to view catalog, hit create. Now what you'll see is I can actually run. So if I select one of these, let me actually select this first one. I can choose my application ID and I could choose my environment. And this will kick off a run of this procedure. And I can go in here and check out the logs. Very useful. Now the chances are, 
probably not just going to have an item that's just calling out a particular plugin step that's doing this. Probably want something a bit more useful. So you can do a procedure step. And let's go to one of mine. I'm going to choose grabbing the GitHub change log. Same thing. You can see I've got the organization in the repository. And so this is going to essentially automatically grab the parameters that are needed for that given procedure. And when I run this, it'll kick off a new job that runs that particular operation. So those are very easy to use, as you can see. Really not a lot. You just define which one it is. And next up, we're going to look at the DSL option. But I think first, you know, a nice way to really think about this is the plugin procedure steps typically are going to be more associated with kind of external operations you want to have occur. Whereas the DSL is going to be instantiating resources within the CloudBees CDR environment. So creating a new application deployment model, creating a new release pipeline, things like that. That's really where the DSL comes to play. Let's get started. So we have a couple of different options here. We're going to come back to this though. Let's expand this. So we've got the DSL editor and one little nice thing that you'll find really scattered throughout the app, but very useful here is this little get help button. Now what you can do is click on it and it's going to give you an example of what this could look like. This is a good starting point. So let's do this application args app name. And this just gives you a starting point. What you can see here is you've got this args.app name, args.project name. Now where are those coming from? Well, we've got to define those. So we can either use this form XML, which if we click on this, we can see exactly what this will look like. And if we copy and paste this, you can define all of the different things. You know, we saw in those examples where they had the different text as well as the different form elements. You can fully customize this and using the XML option gives you great flexibility, but this can get a bit verbose. And so what I often like to do is use the formal parameters. And we'll come back to filling out this end target JSON in a bit. But what you can do is hit OK, hit the dots up here, and then click Parameters. And this is where we can start to add some new parameters, such as project name. Here you can give some information, so which project? OK, you know, and we have all sorts of options in terms of what type of parameter this is. In this case, we just want it to be a, actually we can use this project selector even better. You could just do plain text, but this actually works quite nicely in our case. We're going to leave this empty, so you always have to select. We're also going to make it required, and we can do all sorts of custom validation. You can really get advanced. Um, so in our case, we're going to skip that, but we have this project name now available. We're also going to add another one. We're going to call this release name. And the name is the actual argument, and then the label is what's going to show up in the form. Again, you can put description, all of this. Uh, we're going to leave this as the default. Uh, again, this will be required. And so now I've got a couple of things here, project name and a release name. So let's go back in here and update the item definition. So we had this application, but what we want here is a release. So what we can do here is do project args.project name. Then we can do release args.release name. And one thing is, as you're building this out, you're probably not going to want to write this from scratch freehand. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll create a new release. So create new, and I'll call this my new demo release. And I will choose my project. I'll just leave the default settings here. Create a new pipeline. And you'll see right now I've got this stage one. And I could go here to the DSL IDE or the editor, and I could just copy and paste this. You'll see there are a bunch of default values I don't really care about. And so what I can do instead is if I click here and go to DSL export, I can have it suppress the nulls, suppress the defaults, and then export. And now I can open this. And so all I'll do is just copy and paste this, go to the DSL IDE, and here we go. That's what I have. So I've got the release name, planned end date, planned start date, project name. So these are all things that we can parameterize. And you know, again, we've got some fields that are required over and over again, like the release name. And so again, this is a great spot that you'd want to reuse these parameters. You'd want to use arguments. And, but I could take this and say, you know what? I want this first stage to be called release readiness. And I also want to take another one and call it quality assurance. And maybe one a prod stage too. Why not? 
Oh, spell out production. Okay, so now we've got something to start with. And so if I click play, or execute, what we'll see is that it updates. We'll see now that I've got a new setup here, but I'm gonna to need to make sure to delete this one. So we've got this now, and I could start to add tasks. Well, how do we add a task? Let's just say I want to run a hello world step. If I select task type, go to command. If I define this, echo hello world, very basic. And now if I go to the DSL editor, I come in here and I can see that now I've got this new task. Again, we've got a lot of additional things. You know, these are all very important values that can be used for all sorts of different now, the reason that all of these are exposed is because all of these, like, you know, condition, duration, all of these things, depending on your use case, could be very important. So we present them all. However, again, if we do the DSL export, we can really suppress this. And you're not going to want to do this back and forth like I'm doing here, just because it's going to be a lot of back and forth. Really, you want to build it out here first, export it, and then figure it all out. But in this case, let's just grab this task. And we can come back in here, go to the DSL editor, or we can do it from the DSL IDE as well in here. So we can work off of the same template. In fact, let's just make sure we've got everything up to date. We'll paste this again. And so we've got exactly the same thing we had. Hello world. Let's copy the task. We'll add it to next one. Hello world. We'll say hello world again. Kick it off. You can see it's updated. If I come back in here, there we go. We can see that we've got hello world and then hello world again. Very nice. Okay, so again, very basic pipeline here, but this does show off kind of the basics. Whether you have hello world steps, whether you have things that are more advanced, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so this is working. Very good. Now we want to be able to create this over and over again. So we've got this DSL here, right? And so we can take this and we could actually use it inside of here. We want to make sure that the release name and the project name are going to be unique, right? We've got those arguments. So what we can do is come in here and replace this. So we can say args.project name. We just want to make sure we've got that set everywhere that it says the release name. So like right here as well. And yeah, that should be good. And we've got the oops. That should be release name. And then the project name will be args.project name. And everything else should be good. So we've got that. Um, so now we've got the ability to create this. So my amazing release. Let's kick it off. And I can choose my project. And there we go, V2. And now it's going to instantiate. Now you'll notice it just disappeared. It didn't ask me to go to that resource. And we'll come back to that in a minute. But if I go back to my releases now, there we go, my amazing new release, V2. There we go, it worked exactly as expected. There's a lot more we can do here. But let's go back and fix that last little piece there. So if we go back to the editor, item definition, this end target JSON is what we're gonna want. So if we copy the example here, so the source parameter the object is gonna be an application, in this case we want it to be a release. The object name is going to be so we've got the parameter, we've got the release. Object name is going to be the release name. And the object project name is the project name. And we'll remove the object ID. Let's see if that worked. I forgot the naming convention I already used. So we'll just go with that. And there we go. This template successfully created this release. It continued to its location. Yes. Unlike magic, there we are. So not exactly the most exciting example here. We've got it just saying hello world if we kick this off, start this new release. As expected, that ran remarkably fast. If we click into this, take a look at the logs. There we go, hello world, just as we expected. Okay, so that was all very cool, but let's make this a little bit more interesting. So if we go back to the service catalog, what do we call this, the demo catalog? Go to the catalog editor, there are a few more things that we can do that'll make this a bit more interesting. So right now we've got these planned end dates and planned start dates. So one thing we could do is actually add some variables to the top. So that way it's not just gonna be from whenever I first instantiated this. Instead, what I could do is do something like this where I say def, we'll call this start date. 
is going to be equal to new date. And what I can do is convert that into a string because this is going to be in the, this is using Groovy by the way. So this is using that particular date format. And so I want to add this into a string and we'll force that to be a string. And we're going to pass this in as year, month, day. And we'll do the same thing for the end date. And we're going to give this plus 14 days. So it's a two week period. We're going to format that to be the same year, month, day. Okay. So that's nice. What we can do now is update this end date to be the end date string. And then we'll do the same thing here where it's going to be the start date string. Okay. That's working nicely. Now, what else do we want to do? Well, we can also do, if we want to get a little bit interesting here, right now I've got this echo hello world. That's not too exciting. So what we can do is come up here, add, this is where it gets very useful. As you notice, back when I created that initial release, as you may have noticed, if we go back to that original release that we looked at, if I go to the sandbox, create insurance release, it doesn't actually ask me for the project name or anything like that. It's just interpreting based on the current context. So who I am, what kind of properties exist on my user account, and information like that. So what we can also do here is something similar where we're going to say, the current user is going to be equal to get property. And what we're going to do is grab my user. So this is a little helper function. So this is one of the property helpers. So my user is going to grab whoever is running this. So my user, and then I'm going to grab my username and it's going to say, what is the value? Okay. Now that we've got this current user, we can now use this. So if we come down to this command to run, so what I'm going to do is remove the world. I'm going to add a couple of uh, single quotes to escape out of there. I'm going to say current user. We're just going to join that together and then I'll do the same thing in the next one. Okay. So that should work. Let's go ahead and hit save, go to view catalog, create, go back to my project again. What are we up to V4 now? I think. All right, let's see what happened. Okay. And if we go into hello world, there we go. It now shows me as the user. So very nice. This is now custom to whoever kicked it off. Very nice. And as we looked at before, if we go back to our catalog, if we go back to the editor, there are all sorts of options here in terms of things you can parameterize. So we can choose things like credentials. We actually could have chosen a date period if we wanted to. We can even do drop down menus that load items from you know, sets of properties from a list. You can actually load options using uh, queries from the DSL, all sorts of powerful things that you can do if you want to get super custom here. But in our case, you know, just kept with the basics. And you know, we've been looking at this using DSL. You can actually use DSL to customize all of this as well. And you can export all of these items and it just works. You can also use access control to change who's actually able to access and change and execute these things. So I think this is a good place to wrap up this video. In the future, we'll be referring back to the service catalog quite a bit as it's really an important element of this application. But I hope this has given you a good place to start if you're going to be building out your own catalogs, which I highly suggest you do. All right. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.